on the campus of Rutgers University. Tonight, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers host intrastate rival, the Pirates of Seton Hall University. Here is tonight's starting lineup for the Seton Hall Pirates. At one forward, a 6'8 senior from East Orange, New Jersey, number 30, Franz Volsi. The other forward, a 6'5 senior from Atlanta, Georgia, number 31, Michael Cooper. At center, a 6'9 junior from Newark, New Jersey, number 32, Anthony Avent. At one guard, a 6'3 freshman from Jersey City, number 24, Terry DeHare. At the other guard, a six-foot junior from Far Walkaway, New York, number 20, Oliver Taylor. And the head coach of the Pirates, P.J. Carlissimo. And now for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. At one forward, a 6'5 junior from Trenton, New Jersey, number 35, Tom Savage. The other forward, a 6'8 junior from Carteret, New Jersey, number 31, Keith Hughes. At center, a 6'7 senior from Washington, D.C., number 24, Anthony Duckett. At one guard, a 6'2 senior from Elmwood Park, New Jersey, number 13, Rick Gattica. And at the other guard, a 6'3 junior from Los Angeles, California, number three, Earl Duncan. And the head coach of the Scarlet Knights, Bob Wenzo. These teams have been meeting since 1916. Rutgers leads 14-12, but the Hall has won the last three. Back with a tip in a moment. Send your car on a one-day vacation to Palm Springs. Palm Springs Auto Resort, that is. Located on Route 27 in North Edison. Now off Seton Hall, 22-0 when they hit the 80-point mark. Rutgers never lost the Pirates here at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. Here's a look at your officials for tonight. Tim Higgins, Art McDonald, and Pete Pavia. We're about ready to tip it off. And, Clark, I know you saw a great one here to oh, oh. end the Atlantic 10 season last year in the tournament. That's right. The same type of atmosphere, atmosphere here tonight, John. Excitement, a sea of red. I'm on the edge of my seat, and we just got started. Seton Hall controls the tip. Oliver Taylor is the point guard for Seton Hall. There was some question whether he'd start. He has a bad ankle. De hair is not shy. He bombs away early. Earl Duncan will also put it up, and he knocks down a three-pointer to start the game. Taylor throws up one with the right hand that goes. <laughs> he was questionable as far as whether he would start tonight because of a sprained ankle, but that shot off balance and all, a good indication early for him. He had a very strong game against Wake Forest early. He was the one who was really keeping Seton Hall in the game as they actually led for most of it. That tremendous quickness. Both he and DeHare have the green light. It's Duncan hard. works on DeHare and hits it. That's going to be a tough matchup for Terry DeHare. DeHare. Duncan is a big, strong, physical guard. DeHare dishes it off. Bolsey can't get it to go, and Avent loses it, but it'll still be Seton Hall ball. Taking a look at P.J. Carlismo, who took his team to the championship game, and Ramil Robinson hitting those free throws ended the dream, but what a great run by the Hall. Well, they had an excellent team, very strong defensively. Michael Cooper bombs away from outside. You know, I talked to P.J. this morning, and he talked about handling this crowd, not allowing Rutgers to get off to a real quick, explosive start, and so far the Hall has done a nice job of coming back, countering Rutgers basket. Well, we talked about it earlier. The Hall is a team as Savage lets it go, and there he is. Tom Savage goes over the 1,000-point mark. He's the third fastest man at Rutgers ever to do it. Phil Sellers, of course, and Robert Lloyd, and the 21st man overall at Rutgers to go over 1,000 points. 
Carried the hair with a nice move and hits the shot. But you talked about it earlier that the Hall likes to wear you down. They're so physical. That's exactly what they want to do. They'll run selectively, but they like to play man-to-man, -man, sag in. Molsey and Avon have blocked 23 shots between them, and over the course of a game, they can just physically wear you down. Hughes tries to lob it over the top to duck it, but Avent gets his hand on it and knocks it away. Here's Tom Savage, 59 games to hit the 1,000-point plateau. And quite a career after transferring here from Virginia Tech. The Hall, they'll play all man-to-man. -man. The key to watch is whether both or Avent get in the foul trouble. Duncan, a nice dish, but Duckett can't convert. Still has it. And a charge as he leans into Franz Volsi, who had the position. Franz Volsi did a nice job there cutting off the baseline. Duckett not handling the ball cleanly in traffic, and that's a must if you're going to get a good shot against a strong interior defensive team. The Scarlet Knights lead it by two, 8-6 early here in the first half. the hair from three-point range and hammers it down. He's the leading scorer as a freshman. Well, P.J. Carlissimo gave him the job from day one, and that does a tremendous, that does a wonder for a guy's confidence coming in as a freshman to know that he's got the green light and he's going to be the starting two guard. The hair turns it up on defense as well, working on Duncan. The Hall with their first lead of the game here early on. Hughes can't find an opening. Duck it. Turnover as Taylor was double teamed by Hughes and Datica, and he took a walk. That's what Winslow hopes to do with the press. He wants the score field goals and get into the press early to try to force some turnovers and get this throng on their feet. Carter comes into the game. Craig Carter, number 23, 6'3 junior out of Brooklyn, New York. He's got to be one of the best six men in the country. 57% field goal shooting so far this year, Craig Carter. Savage thought he was hammered as he put the shot up, but no whistle. Avent working on Hughes. Good pass to Volsey underneath on the baseline. He hits it. Boy, Michael Cooper, body beautiful himself, showing you how he can dump it inside to the post-up player. Cooper second on this team in assists, averaging over three assists a game. Savage down the lane, throws it up, won't go. Carter gets it back, dishes it to Duckett, and Avent packs him as he tries to take it up. Here's the penetration, the slice and slash, then the dish. Duckett strong to the basket, Avent over the top. Although Volsey made a pretty good play, Avent on the over the top with the foul. Well, that's what made Seton Hall such a strong team last year was their defense. As you saw, both Volsey and Avent were there up high. You and I talked about it earlier. Everybody focuses on what Seton Hall lost, and they lost some great players, Ramos and Morton, both playing in the NBA now. But Avent, Volsey, and Cooper played considerable time last year, and this team is quietly confident about being a little better than what people expect them to be. They did lose a lot, but four of their five starters were, at one time or another, rated in the top 100 as high school players, and three of the four were in the top 50. Chasing after the ball, it'll be Seton Hall ball as Duckett went down to grab it. Actually, they're giving it over to Rutgers. I thought Duckett had lost it. I think they whistled it. Avent touched it on the baseline. Here we get a look at it. Rugby time. Duckett to the turf. And there's Avent, foot on the baseline. Good call. Good call by the officials there. Earl Duncan tries to go around the pick. Savage set it up. Foul was called by Co on Cooper. <laughs> Savage was going to try to flush that one. Foul before the shot on the bump out front by Cooper. Here we get a look at it. Side cleared for Savage here. And there's the bump. 12-11 is a one-point game. 15-58 left. We'll be back as Bob Wenzel works his crew. Clark Kellogg is shooting 71%. Rutgers at 57% right now, so both teams are pretty high. They're really shooting it well. Seton Hall comes in shooting 53% as a group. Rutgers, though, only at 44% so far this season. And Rutgers has had a couple of poor shooting games, games that they, they've managed to win anyway against Delaware 
They shot around 33% and still managed to win the game. They're a pretty good free throw shooting team, though, at 72% as a unit. Duncan behind his back and around to here, throws it up. Not a good shot, and Avent comes down with a rebound. Boy, Taylor showing no ill effect from that sprained ankle. I was just going to say, he's moving pretty quickly for a guy who almost wasn't able to play this game. Nice pass underneath. Cooper has Savage right there. Gets the shot off. Bolsey follows. It won't go. thinks about the three-pointer. Nice move as it goes around, but there to block it is Duckett. Well, I think the hair may have gotten that shot off had he kept it in his right hand. Now watch, he's going to bring it right back to the defense here with the left hand. Right in the path of Duckett. Duckett excellent defensive play, though, that time by Anthony. Terry the hair showing some good moves to get to the back. Basket, basket rather. And then not managing to get the shot off as Duckett was there to swat it up into the first row. Taylor moves into the paint, hangs off the glass. And Keith Hughes comes away with the rebound. And Carter will bring it up. No! Keith Hughes, the transfer from Syracuse. I felt that time by Taylor. Battle on the floor. Good job by Hughes to get it to Savage. He lets a three-pointer go, but short. That's really where the hall excels. Coming over to help out when anybody gets dribble penetration and then giving that offensive team usually just one shot. Ryan's balls. He finds a path, goes down it, and hits the shot. <laughs> nice little move by Bolsey to walk down the lane. The left side of the lane cleared itself, and Bolsey took advantage. Dadica running the point now, which is where he played most of the time last year. He was the leading assist man on the team a year ago. Hughes turns around and gets the shot. Bob Winslow really likes Keith Hughes. He likes his body and the ability he has to play inside and out. Again, consistency has been his problem, but he'll be a marquee player in the A-10. Avent looks for an opening, finds Volsey. Nice move, but offensive foul as he tried to hook his way around the defensive player. Oh, 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 P.J. can't believe it, and I don't know if I do either. Holtzy looked like he made a pretty clean move. And we've, we've got to look at it here. There's a little pump fake. Ah. <laughs> Maybe a little elbow as right. he tried to hook yeah, his he, way around Duckett. Yeah, he got the chicken wing out there a little bit. <laughs> The ball is turned over, and Seton Hall will bring it back up as Dadica felt the pressure. Daryl Crisp now into the game for Seton Hall, a freshman. The guards for Seton Hall are both freshmen. De Hare was fouled by Carter before he got the shot off. Green 14-13, Rutgers has the lead by one. A freshman backcourt, but a pretty good freshman backcourt for the Hall. An excellent freshman backcourt. The hair leading his team in scoring, and Chris gives him quality minutes off the bench. He'll probably play a little more because of Taylor's injury. Wolsey is blocked, but Chris is there to bail him out. Avent wants the hair, who broke free and is there off the glass. It won't drop. Cooper tries to follow right back to Volsey. He can't get the shot either. Carter just pulls up. The shot is short. Nobody underneath but blue jerseys. Cooper oh, good oh, lob to oh, Avon. Oh, what a great pass by Michael Cooper. A touch pass by the guy with the tight bicep. Michael Cooper gives you so much that forward position. He bangs away like a guy who's much taller. Savage finds the lane along the baseline. Can't get it to go, but it's picked up and in. And the full court pressure by Rutgers really hasn't been a factor here in the early going. Cooper open. 
stops, pops, and hits it. You know, Michael Cooper is what I call a stat sheet stuffer. He's going to give you some assists. He's going to give you some boards. He's going to give you some points. And he's going to give you good defensive effort. He's going to fill up the stat sheet come games in. Seton Hall with a one-point lead. 12-20 left here in the first half. Hughes battling underneath, can't get it, and Cooper comes away with it again. Nice help that time by Avent. They had him open, Chris didn't see him. Number 33, Lee Perry in the game for Rutgers. The foul is called there as Chris was trying to work his way free. Seton Hall getting ready to bring players in. Earl Duncan is coming back in. Anthony Duckett as well, and Daryl Smith coming in. Back in the lineup. Rutgers. Clearly, Rutgers a little deeper. Seton Hall very, very thin along their bench, especially with Winchester out. Winchester was their first man off the bench, and he has to sit out, injured his ankle in practice yesterday. So PJ's really shorthanded. Again, foul trouble would really bring his lack of depth to the forefront this game, but so far, Avent and Bolton doing a pretty nice job of staying outside, staying out of foul trouble. The reason for the holdup is they were questioning where the players should report into the timer. They've got it straightened out now, and Seton Hall will inbounds. Chris with it. The fans really getting on Daryl Chris, the freshman. <laughs> Every time he touches the ball, you hear the cheer go out. Boy, but how about the poise of the Pirates thus far? They haven't been rattled. Avent along the baseline doesn't hit anything. Until maybe then. Earl Duncan for three, just like that. There's the pressure again. Earl Duncan with eight points in the game already, averaging 14 on the season. Good defense by Rutgers, but DeHair finds an opening. The shot won't go. A big collision underneath, but no whistle. Oh, they'll just play straight man to man unless they get into foul trouble. They're going to play a tough man to man. The ball is knocked loose, and Smith couldn't hang on to it, and Chris comes away with it. Good pass to Avent, all alone, goes for the dunk, but he's hacked by Smith. Boy, excellent feeding of the post that time by Chris. Avent a little slow in his move. Here he has an opportunity, takes the rhythm bounce. That slowed him up. That fraction of a second, second with the rhythm bounce allowed Smith to get back and commit the foul and force Avent to try to come up with two from the line. Jones, a freshman, outstanding freshman out of Mooresville, Pennsylvania. Number 15 checks into the game for Rutgers. Averaged 24 points in high school a year ago, and he's one of their top recruits coming in this year. Anthony Avent will try and tie this game up now for the Hall. And what's been a close one right from the start. No one able to put a real run together. Knocks it down, and we are tied at 19 with 10.47 left. Seton Hall and Rutgers, and the Rack Pack is going crazy already. After Patient of Creative Sports Marketing in association with ESPN. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of Creative Sports Marketing and ESPN is prohibited. Don't do it. <laughs> All tied up at 19 here. What we expected to be a good game has been everything we expected thus far. Rutgers a very good three-point shooting team. 39% on the year so far tonight, three of four. Jones just lets that one go, and it's too long. Chris with the pressure back from Jones again. Well, they're really trying to flash Avent and Volta to the ball in their half-court offense. The hair gets up in the lane, won't drop. Volsey is there with a strong rebound. Missed time jump that time by Duckett enabled Volsey to get to the weak side offensive board. 
Volsey with six points in the game. Savage goes up and down in a turnover as they call the walk. <laughs> Savage pointing to somebody, but Tom, you can't jump up and bounce it to yourself. Bob Wenzel, who was a star here at Rutgers, MVP twice during his playing career back in 70, 71, 72 in those years. And a star player here came back to be the coach. Datica is back in the game, as is Lee Perry. De Hare turns around and lets it go. He will keep shooting even when they're not falling. <laughs> That's the mentality of a score. You know, I'm always one shot away from getting out of the slump. Terry DeHair just two for eight at this point. A little push was called before the shot. The second foul on Franz Volsi with 9.37 left, so there's something P.J. was a little bit worried about. Well, both has fouled out one of their four games, and Avon has fouled out two of the four. Wolsey will stay on the floor, though, because Seton Hall is so thin. Keith Hughes from three. Knocked away. Nice job by Perry to knock it away from Cooper. And Savage lets it go. That's long. Taylor back on the floor for Seton Hall, and they leave Christ in the game as well. Trying to run a little cross screen between Volsi and, and Avent. Chris from way out. It's short. Knocked away nicely by Dadica, but Taylor saves it. Boy, good quickness to stay that save that ball. Seton Hall just playing a little triangle game with their three big guys and keeping Taylor and Chris on the perimeter. Avent turns around. That one won't fall. And Hughes hauls down another rebound. Attica works on the freshman Chris. The shot will not go. Franz Volsi from way out. Shows good range. Boy, he's just smooth and efficient. Doesn't try to do anything he really can't. That time had the little open 15 to 16 footer and buried him. Seton Hall on a six to nothing run. Volsey with eight points, and they've opened up a 23-19 lead. Savage turns around. And again, Seton Hall does such a good job of clearing under the boards. One shot and out for Rutgers. And Cooper comes back and hits a three-pointer. Seton Hall now on a nine-nothing run. And Bob Wenzel wants a timeout. Seton Hall up 26 to 19 at this point. PJ has his boys running early. That's their 7 of 20, shooting 35%, and they're not getting any second chances. Seton Hall does an excellent job on their defensive board. Here's the transition pull-up by Datica. Nothing but blue shirts on the glass. Four blue shirts. Datica makes a late effort, but Volpe clearly controls the board. Number 25, Jim Dickinson, the 7-foot freshman, checks into the game for Seton Hall. run in the last three and a half minutes for the Hall. Nice point, nice time to get Dickinson in the game. The Hall with a decent lead. Uh-oh. They call a foul on Taylor, it looks like. Dickinson was trying to get over there to help, got over a little late. Taylor couldn't believe it was on him. Here's the penetration. Duncan, again, he's such a physical guard. When he gets there in traffic, he's strong enough to finish it off. And Taylor picks up the foul, and Art McDonald whistled it counted, and he has a chance for, for three. Duncan has 10 of Rutgers' 21 points in the game thus far. The transfer from Syracuse. Hammers down to convert it. PJ's got to be pleased with the effort of his club. He was worried about the crowd factor and the foul problem. Cooper gets Hughes up in the air and hits the shot. <laughs> I wonder if he knew Mike Cooper was going to get off to the offensive start that he's gotten off to in this first half. Certainly a bonus for P.J. Cooper with nine points already. 
We still have seven minutes left here in the first half. Hughes spins, works on the freshman, and the freshman gets called for the foul, Dickinson. Boy, that was a bailout foul there because Hughes had nowhere to go. Dickinson certainly had him cut off and got committed the foul as Hughes tried to go up with the hand, but he did do a nice job of defense on him originally. Here we see Hughes on the floor, little twirl move here, and then right into Dickinson. Oh boy, that's uh, that's one you got to let go. The hands were straight up in the air. It's not like he was reaching over top. Hughes, they said, Hughes will remind you, uh, transferred from Syracuse, sat out last year, and really missed most of the year before at Syracuse because he didn't get a lot of playing time. And then he decided to transfer, actually left Syracuse in February. And they say he looks great one night, and then the next night he just can't get it together. And the layoff is probably a big factor. Stolen away nicely by Carter. Duncan among a bunch of blue shirts. Oh! Still bangs it off the wall. Oh, oh, oh. He clearly wasn't squared up on that one. Little trick shot by Duncan. Earl Duncan with 13 points and gets the crowd roaring once again. Dickinson tries to feed it down low to Avent, but can't click, and they turn it over. One more dribble, and Dickinson may be able to complete that pass with a better angle. But Rutgers doing what Coach Winslow wanted them to do, force a turnover with the pressure and get the crowd into it. He's Hughes spinning, turns, it won't go. And again, there's that one shot, and we're out of here. Really a tough shot that time by Hughes. The defense hadn't been moved to catch it and turn around and shoot an off-balance jump shot, not the shot you want when you're trying to make a run. Seton Hall goes into a bit of a delay game, but Cooper goes right around it, oh, hooks it up, oh, and falls, oh, and he's fouled. <laughs> Don't show me your whole game tonight, Mike. <laughs> See, they lifted everybody else, and Cooper just had clear sailing to the hoop. Hughes, a little late reacting. As a matter of fact, the whole Rutgers defense was raised to the foul line. That opened up the backside for Cooper. Look at that. Everybody's lifted. And then the penetration. This is a great ball fake here. Two-foot stop. Power move. That's just a great basketball play there by Cooper. We saw Seton Hall use that offense last week in the ACC East Challenge against Wake Forest, but they were stalling at that point. They certainly didn't stop <laughs> Cooper as he saw the opening and just took off. Ball gets his own rebound, and that one done. That's great second effort, but you can see why Hughes is struggling from the floor. Shooting percent is always a function of shot selection, and he's really taking some tough shots that time, able to get his own miss. Stephen Hall lines it up again. Cooper says, I'll go this way. Maybe not. Taylor working on Perry, or Carter, rather. Carter commits the foul. That's Carter's third foul, and that's a big factor. He's the first guy who comes off the bench for Rutgers, and he'll sit back down. Rick Dattica comes back in. Craig Carter was really a starter for most of his career and took the six-man role this year. Bob Wendell told me he's, a, he's accepted that role very well and is shooting 57% from the floor, and he's a slicer, splasher, very active type of player and gives them a lift off the bench. Dickinson, crowd getting on him too. They know who the freshmen are. <laughs> the hair working on Dattica. Dattica strips him of the ball. Jim Dickinson, a seven-footer. In a game against Iona, hit a three-pointer. He became the first Big East player, seven-foot player, ever to hit a three-pointer. And a pretty nifty move there along the baseline. Well, I talked to P.J. today, and he talked about Dickinson being a project, but nonetheless, he has some qualities that you really can't teach. Nice soft hands, good touch, and with continued work, he's going to be a factor down the road. 
Duncan loses the handle, but Duncan follows afterwards. Anthony Avan picks up his second foul of the night. And only 4.30 sets left here in the first half, but nonetheless, Seton Hall worried about those fouls because, again, we can't point it out enough, they do not go very deep along the bench. I think P.J. would really be glad to get into the locker room at halftime with Avent and Volsey with no more than two. Absolutely. Ducky gets a kind bounce there. Well, I was here last year for the A-10 Conference Championship game, Kent State Rutgers, and this place was just rumbling and rolling, and they haven't really picked it up yet because Seton Hall has done a nice job of maintaining their poise and keeping the crowd out of it, but this place can really erupt when Rutgers gets going. Dickinson is under there to get the miss. Seton Hall leads it 33-29. Cooper trying to break free along the baseline. Savage was there to cut his lane off. Twenty-eight left in the first half. Taylor worked on the freshman Jones, and Jones did a good job. Taylor steals it back, though. Pass over to Dickinson. He's seven feet. If he was seven-two, he would have had that pass. <laughs> Just a shade high. There's PJ. He's got to be feeling pretty good inside. There he is encouraging his troops. Big East Coach of the Year. He's the Coach of the Year for the entire nation, pretty much. Consensus choice after taking the hall all the way to that title game. Savage wants to work on Cooper. Knocked up in his face by Dickinson. That shot is short. Well, a great rebound by Duncan. Duncan underneath. Perry is whistled for the foul. Dickinson really doing a pretty nice job on him. He's getting some quality time here in the first half. And doing a good job with it. Well, again, he's a space eater. Both teams are over the limit. Earl Duncan checks back into the game. Boy, after the good start, Rutgers has gone cold from the field, and that's been a problem for this squad. Their field goal percentage. And quite honestly, they forced some shots inside, but their perimeter shots have been pretty decent shots, I think. Dickinson shows nice form at the free throw line. Oh, 35 to 29, a six point lead for the Seton Hall Pirates over the home team. Rutgers and the Scarlet Knights trying to come back. Seton Hall leads it by six, and Clark, Rutgers shot selection not as good as Coach Bob Wenzel would like. Well, here's a fourth attempt by Hughes. Good defense by Cooper and Avon. Now, he's going to stay with to get it up on the glass. A little rushed off balance. This one had a positive result as Hughes was able to convert finally. But on a couple of other occasions, Hughes and his teammates have forced some things inside. And there you look at points in the paint. Rutgers only with 10. And a lot of those attempts have been forced inside. Seton Hall, on the other hand, with 20 because they've done a nice job being patient inside. The rebounds pretty even at this point. Seton Hall with 19, Rutgers with 20. And we talked about Avent and Volsey and the force that they are up front for Seton Hall. Again, they weren't starters last year, but they played a lot of quality time. That's right. They gained valuable experience on that march through the NCAA tournament. Daryl Crist is in the game for Seton Hall. Duck it, and Dickinson knocks it away. He just seems to stand his ground, doesn't do anything fancy, he isn't up there with the, with the people up around the rim, but he's still knocking the ball away. And when you're 7-2, if you're in good position and use your hands, you can make a difference. Charge is called on the hair, they turn it over. Duck, Duncan was in there with position. Number one foul, the first on Terry DeHair, the freshman. Ground level coming right at you. Ooh, Duncan moving a little bit, but he's in excellent defensive position that time. Well, Duncan might have got the benefit of the doubt there. His feet looked like they were still moving a little bit. <laughs> and 
This is a mismatch. Dickinson out on the floor. Savage tried to dish it to Perry. He couldn't. The foul was called on Duckett. Duckett picks up his second foul of the night. Keith Hughes will come back into the game for the Scarlet Knight. Lee Perry will go to the bench. Lee Perry, his brother Tim, plays for Phoenix in the NBA. He was the star, of course, over at Temple, also in the Atlantic 10. You know, Seton Hall, because they're thin on the bench, really is enjoying this pace of game. It allows their players not to get, not, it allows them to not get as tired as they would if this game was a 94-foot game like Rutgers would like to play. Exactly, we expected Rutgers definitely to push the pace of the game. Avan picks up his sixth point of the night. But you know, it's really tough to run if you aren't getting stops defensively and rebounding and outletting the ball. And Rutgers really doesn't like to push it after make. Chris doing a nice job on Datica. Hughes gets it in the paint, turns, and there's Avent pulling down the rebound. Once again, one shot, and we turn and go the other way. Big time board that time in traffic by double A. See what kind of adjustment Rutgers makes to this four on top, one handling the ball type of offensive set for, for Seton Hall. Seton Hall has built up an eight point lead with 220 left there. The biggest lead of the game for Seton Hall. Using the clock a little bit here. Now they're going to get into something. Down to seven on the shot clock. Chris doesn't get the shot off, but he's fouled. Foul is on Earl Duncan. Reminder coming up at halftime. Be sure to join Chris Fowler in our studios. We'll have scores of other games. A live preview of that game. A top 10 matchup between Missouri and Arkansas. Is that a battle or what? That should be a dandy. Todd Day and Mayberry at Arkansas. Doug Smith, Anthony Keeler. That should be one that goes up and down full throttle from start to finish. Bob Carpenter and Dan Bonner will be on hand to bring you that game. Rick Dattica really hasn't got into the offense. Savage with a nice move, changes hands, kisses the glass, and it goes. Oh, a nifty little flashing play that time by Savage. Well, again, the Hall has done a nice job of controlling tempo and controlling the backboard. Avent left alone and hits the little hook shot. You know, Bob Winslow, I talked to him yesterday, and he really was concerned about the inside strength of Seton Hall. And it's really shown itself, I think, probably more at the defensive end. Well, Duncan trying to find his way through. And dribbles it off his knee and out of bounds. Under a minute and a half left here in the first half. Seton Hall leads by eight, 39-31. Cooper is left there, makes a nice move, off the glass. I don't know if he wanted to bank that one home, but he got it. I don't know if he would have called that one in horse or not, but I am impressed with this game. He's doing it all. 14 points for Michael Cooper and a 10-point lead for Seton Hall with under a minute left in the first half. Hughes tries to fight his way free. It'll still be Rutgers' ball. They say it went off Cooper. I think Chris thought it went off one of the Rutgers players because he actually had a chance possibly to save it. Datica for three. And he bangs it down. I just said a moment ago, Datica hadn't been shooting much, and they need him in their offense to win. Well, this team takes a lot of three-point shots, and he's capable from there. Shot clock is off. Seton Hall doesn't have to shoot, but Cooper says, I will anyway. Dickinson bangs it off the glass. <laughs> well, a good thing the glass was there. It stopped it into the hole. That would have been in the parking lot up front if it wasn't for the glass. 15 seconds left. Seton Hall 43, Rutgers 34. Duncan with a three-pointer that's short. Perry with a strong rebound.
fouled before he can get the shot off. And with six seconds left, it was Daryl Chris with his foul. Seton Hall has done a nice job of, I, mean, I can't say quiet in this crowd because it's still loud, but keeping them not quite into the game the way Rutgers would like. Keeping them on their feet as opposed to on their feet. And that's a big part of this environment, this crowd, the excitement they can generate and the lift they can give this club. But Seton Hall has done it inside at both ends of the floor. Lee Perry cuts into the lead before halftime the best way possible with no time ticking off the clock. But if he makes this one, Seton Hall with six seconds left to rush it up the other end. Taylor with time ticking off the clock. Gets a three-pointer off. Nowhere near Chris Hollows, but not before the buzzer goes. 43 to 36. The Battle of New Jersey, the first half, goes to Seton Hall. Right now, for more scores and highlights from around the country on this college basketball Wednesday night, let's go back to our studios and 23 to 36. As we take a look at our storyline and the band as well. The reason is very obvious. Rutgers is just not shooting well. They really aren't. Their front line, Savage, Duckett, and Hughes, a combined 6 of 20. The team only 38% field goal shooting. Seton Hall has done a great job on the backboard. Michael Cooper has been fabulous in the first half, doing it all. And there you see the 24 to 12 edge on the glass. We're just about ready to get underway with the second half here. Seton Hall Pirates will send their starting five back in. That's no surprise. Rutgers comes back with their save five as well. Earl Duncan thinks about a three, gets to hair in the air. That one's long. Danica with a good follow, though, to come up with it. Tight rims here. You're going to usually see long rebounds on tight rims. Savage from three. Hooper gets a hand on the ball. Fighting for it underneath. The foul is called on Anthony Avent, who picks up his third foul of the game early here in the second half. Well, again, the foul issue could be a factor. We talked about it early. The first half, not really a problem. Here's the Aaron shot blocked by Cooper. And then Duckett is sandwiched between two Seton Hall players. Avent picked up the foul. We'll have to keep an eye on Avent now. As we say, that's his third. We haven't even hit the one-minute mark here in the second half. Hughes thinks about three, takes a couple of steps in, gets a nice bounce, and it goes in. And that's what Rutgers needs to get their big guns underway because they were silent in the first half. And they've got to get those guys loaded up and firing on all cylinders. And then that way the crowd can find it, its way back into this one as well. Harry DeHair from three and hands it. Bumping underneath and Volsey will be called for the foul. And Franz Volsey picks up his third foul. The basket will count on the three-point shot. The foul came after the shot, banging away in the lane. And that's a big turn of events with Volsey and Avan picking up their third fouls early. Huge, could be very huge. Hughes wants to work on Volsey. Volsey backs off, so he decides to shoot it. Well, you almost have to give Hughes that shot. About an 18, 19 footer. And Volsey did the wise thing just to kind of give him token pressure. Hughes, who was pretty silent in the first half, has hit four quick ones here in the second half. Avent does get the lob pass from Cooper, but can't hang on to it. P.J. pointed out to Cooper that was an excellent pass. He just couldn't, Avent just couldn't, he didn't squeeze it. Lost sight of it before it got into his hand. Look for Rick Datica to shoot the ball more as Earl Duncan tries to dish it to duck it. He doesn't get it, but it'll still be Rutgers' ball. B.J. out of the jacket. 
Clark has only taken two shots on the night, and that is hard to believe. He's hitting one of them three-pointer. Here's a guy who has been the top three-point shooter in the history ever since they put the three-point line in there. He was one of their leading scorers last year. Duncan with a nice turnaround. Well, the Scarlet Knights come out knocking down some perimeter shots. Something they didn't do in the first half. And the rack starts to make some noise. <laughs> Eight-hand with a nice little left-handed hook. <laughs> You gotta excuse me for being excited when the big guys in the paint make those kind of moves, John, but, oh, I love to see a guy go to the opposite hand in the lane. The way you used to do it. On occasion. He cues for three. He doesn't even touch the rim. You think Lumpo shook him up a little bit in the locker room at halftime? No question. T. Hughes was listening. Wolsey working on Duckett. Good shot over top of the big guy. The cast of characters has changed for the Seton Hall team, but the way they play, their poise and their confidence on the road, still much a part of what they do. Earl Duncan's shot is off the mark. Ollie Taylor dishes off to Cooper. Duckett cuts his lane off. Back comes Rutgers. For three, it's way short, and the hair comes up with it. Taylor took steps, they didn't call it, and the hair stops and hits a three-pointer. How do you like this youngster's confidence? He comes out early in the first half, knocks down a couple, then goes cold, and right there in transition pulls up from the tray. He is not shy by any stretch of the imagination. He's got three three-pointers, 11 points on the night. Savage lets a three-point shot go that will not fall. And once again, we're back to this one shot and back the other way. He all dominated the glass. They had 14 defensive rebounds in the first half. Savage extremely cold. Two of ten now on the night. They lob it over to Avent. Good defensive play by Savage, but Avent gets it, and Cooper is there for the easy deuce. Boy, a great look. Somebody lost track of Michael Cooper. I don't know how. He's 6'4". 6'5 and about 220. Seton Hall has the lead back up to 10. 55-45. PJ and his group doing a job tonight. With a nifty move. Hey, even if you haven't ever bounced the ball, if you're watching this game, this is a sweet move to the basket with the opposite hand in the lane. And under the circumstances, the Rutgers team making a run at Avent with that nice little simple move in the paint area. And you really can't stress it enough that Volsey, Avent, and Cooper, as we take a look at the Hall in the second half that high, are so poised, despite none of them being starters last year, you'd never know it. They really play with a lot of poise and composure. Savage with a good drive between the blue jerseys and gets the shot. And I think that poise and the, the road mentality is a credit to the coaching staff. And Taylor hits one from three-point range. They're still perfect for the half, and that's one way that you weather the storm of the home team making a run at you. Hughes with a nifty move in the paint, he says. You can do it at one end, end to the Avent, I'll do it at the other end. Boy, has he awakened from his slumber. Hughes has nine points already, and we're just five minutes into the second half. He only had six in the first half, 15 total for Keith Hughes. Bob Wenzel said he's a do-it-all player. Again, his consistency, the only thing lacking, he can do everything. Savage comes up and lays the arm on Anthony Avent, and he's whistled. That's just Savage's first foul of the game. The Tom Savage is his first. Harry DeHare gives it off to Oliver Taylor, who has really shown no sign of the bad ankle that we heard about before the game. Really hasn't, and PJ has really spread out his minutes effectively. Cooper. Cooper wants to give it to Volsey, but the judgment didn't force it. They've got two guys around, and they're really sagging in. Volsey pushed off on Keith Hughes as he tried to get position, and he's whistled. And that is four on Franz Volsey. And now, P.J., 
has a decision to make. It's not a hard one as he brings Dickinson in. But with 14 minutes left in the game, how long can he sit down Franz Volsen? Hey, let's take a look at this. There's the left arm. Oh. Yeah. And both the, An honest reaction. Duncan throws it up and rims out. So Volsey sits down with four. Avent has three. Seton Hall has a nine-point lead. Dickinson did a nice job in the first half. In eight minutes, he came up with six points. So if, they can, if he can duplicate that kind of effort, PJ will be very pleased. A very efficient time for Dickinson. Eight points, five rebounds in 15 minutes against Wake Forest. He's done a similar job here tonight. PJ going to try to just slow it up just a bit with one of his key players out of the lineup. Cooper loses the dribble. And Rutgers comes away with it. Oh, nice Dyson look. throws it back out to Savage. He bangs down the three-pointer. Well, that's a great look by Duncan to penetrate and then look back to a good three-point shooter in Savage. The lead is down to six. Shot is short. Hughes with the rebound. around the hair trying to throw it out to Savage but Cooper doing the job on defense as well knocks it away little hedge and get back came up with the steal that time Cooper jumped in the lane of Duncan then was able to react and get a hand on it nice play defense! 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 the hair over top of Duncan that one is way short Craig Carter moves it up to Perry banged in the lane and that will be number four Sometimes it's almost like the over-the-back foul. When you're on, a, on the off defensive board or offensive board, and you're trying to go over the top. There are times you might not touch the player, and they still whistle the foul. Here it is, same thing. Wrong place, wrong time. And again, just very incidental contact, if any. And tough way to get your four. Perry gets to shoot two. Cut into the lead. You've now sent the two big guys for Seton Hall to the bench with four fouls, Volsey and Avent. Cooper played all 20 minutes in the first half, and you wonder if Rutgers is able to keep up this pace, which has quickened a little bit, where the fatigue will set in with him because he's called on to do an awful lot. Mike Jones checks into the game for Rutgers, and Seton Hall forced to go to a small lineup with three guards in there, Chris, Taylor, and DeHair. And this is more than Rutgers liking. They feel like they can match up much better now with Avon and Bolsey out of the lineup because they like to play three guards on occasion. comes the crowd. Almost a five-second call. They got over for some help. The ball was tipped out, but Rutgers really turning up the defense. I see, that's what happens when you start playing better offensively. That can lift the defense up, and with the crowd going the way they are, the intensity is certainly going to pick up. Four-point game. Seton Hall still with the lead. Just under 12 minutes left. Shot clock is down to six before the shot is off. And Hughes comes away with the rebound. Carter breaks three along the baseline. And the lead is now just two. Today you buy your new Rocky, the Wide Track 4x4 by Daihatsu, we suggest that you pack it up and take off. 
Enjoy all the Rocky's Carlyle comforts, top up or top down. Then, let Rocky's powerful engine take you where you can be all alone. But don't be surprised if a lot of other Rocky owners know a good suggestion when they hear one. Rocky, the new wide track 4x4 by Daihatsu. One of the most respected names in Japan for over 80 years. Daihatsu. Grab a bucket and mop. Scrub the bottom and pop. There is nothing so clean. That's my burger machine. With a broom and a brush. Clean it up for the rush. Before you open the door. Or to shine on the floor. When we finish. And a nice job along the baseline here. Here the Pirates slow and recognize in the open lane. Cooper gets there late. And Carter able to get to the hole. This 7 0 run, John, has coincided with Bolsey and Avent taking the seat on the seat in the whole bench. They both have four fouls apiece on them. When Bolsey went out of the game, it was a double digit lead. Avent went out shortly after that. A 7 0 run. Seton Hall's lead is now. See, with this type of matchup, this type of lineup, Dickinson really is out of place if he has to go out on the perimeter. The turnover. Oliver Taylor turns it over. And Rutgers will have a chance to tie or take a lead. I don't know if there's a louder building in college basketball. I've not been in all of them, but certainly this has to rank amongst the top for Noah. Savage for three. That one is short. Good job by Jones to get in there quickly underneath, but it's turned over. Seton Hall needs one here. They've been fighting the shot clock in the five-second count for the last three or four possessions. Third largest crowd ever, just under 9,000 to hair. That's an NBA three-pointer, and the freshman just calmly bangs it home. How about that, folks? Oh, this guy's a freshman, but he uh, clearly doesn't have the shooter's mentality of a freshman. He's got a veteran shooting mentality. His fourth three-pointer, to hair with 14 points. Jones works it inside to Hughes, tries to get it up with the right hand. Hall comes away with it. This good position defense that time by Dickinson. Hughes probably should look to take Dickinson away from the basket and maybe try to beat him with the dribble. Gattaker slaps Taylor on the wrist. And he's called for his first foul of the night. Well, I tell you what. The Pirates have played the role of pine tree, bend but don't break. And they've weathered the storm. They had a little dry spell there, but they've got to lead back to five. Spurred the hair. that time by Jones. That's one of the things P.J. talked about when he talked to me about Terry DeHair, the fact that he's got great range from three-point distance, but he's also able to put it on the floor and get to that medium-range jump shot, which is a big asset when you got a guy who's a threat from deep that forces defenders to come up on him, and when he can put it down and score in traffic, it makes him that much more versatile. Cooper wants some help. He's double teamed. Finally, DeHair comes to his aid. Boy, Rutgers really getting after it defensively, acting with their feet and hands. DeHair turns. Cooper turns, backs away, puts the shot up, but he's fouled. 
Well, he's done everything else tonight. Why not go to him when you're trying to keep a team from getting back into your lead? Sixty-one fifty-six. Seton Hall still with the lead. Rutgers got it down to two. Terry DeHair took care of that with a three-pointer. The Hall, not a very good free-throw shooting team this season so far, 67%. Strong points in their drive to the championship game last year. The fact that they made a lot of clutch free throws, and because they were so big, they were able to draw a lot of fouls. They're going to a zone now for the first time because of the foul problem. Seton Hall on the zone defense here, 2 3. You may see Rick Dadica then get a chance to get into the offense more if he can bomb away from three outside that zone. Savage along the baseline, just follow. And the foul is on Cooper. Craig Carter was in there very quickly. One of the weaknesses of the zone defense, no specific blockout responsibilities. 90% of the shots from one side come off to the other side, and Carter, flying to the weak side glass, drew the foul. Had control of the basketball, so he'll get two shots. Craig Carter. Well, John, you talked about possibly um, coming up with a hairdo like that for yourself sometime in the not too distant future. There's, there's huh? no question that Craig Carter leads the Atlantic 10, maybe the nation, in hair. <laughs> at least, at least in <laughs> hairstyle. No question. <laughs> oh. Carter cuts it back down to a four-point lead. Good guard play is so crucial. Attica with good defense, cuts it off. Cooper was there for the rebound, takes a hop backwards. Dickinson just throws it up, follows and gets his own rebound. Oh, you got to credit Michael Cooper again, keeping it alive on the glass. Made a nice pass to Dickinson, and he was able to get his second shot attempt, and the hall just won't wilt. Dickinson, a freshman, a seven-footer, has been impressive with the time he's used. Carter along the baseline has to throw it out to Duncan for three. No good. It's off the top of the backboard. A nice look that time by Craig Carter on the penetration. Duncan's been pretty good from behind that arc. Weather the storm thus far, a six-point lead with their big gun sitting on the bench. Taylor has a clear lane in there, misses the layup, and Rutgers comes away. Duncan out of control a bit. Savage loses it. It'll be Seton Hall ball. P.J. Carlissimo is giving it to his crew as they come back to the bench. Just the same, they have a six-point lead. Keaton Hall doing most of the ho-ho-hoing here. Reminder, number four against number seven coming up. Missouri's knocked off North Carolina, Louisville to win the Maui Classic. Arkansas rated as high as number one in some magazines. Bob Carpenter and Dan Bonner will bring you the exciting action from that. We see Volsey and Avent on the bench. Seton Hall still has the lead, though. Still on top, six-point cushion here. And I'm sure P.J. hoping his troops can hang on to this lead before he sends those two guys back into the game. Probably would do it at the, probably try to go as long as he can without maybe bringing them back. But I would expect to see them back in the next couple of minutes. Stephen Hall has done a good job with three guards in there. Taylor throws a big rainbow up. Gattaca finally comes up with it. Danica from way outside and way off the mark as well. He's just not been able to get in the offense. It's about the only the third shot he's taken tonight. 
And a good shooter like that, I, I would imagine, has to shoot much more to get exactly. his game going. Hasn't been able to find the rhythm just because he hasn't taken enough shot attempts. Hughes just misses one off the glass. Almost steals it back. The ball is tied up. Possession arrow, though, is going to Seton Hall. Well, nice effort that time by Hughes to come up. Here comes Bolsey now. <laughs> Going to replace Taylor, who's had a couple of, had the one clear layup that didn't go down, and then the last possession took a took a real tough shot. So CJ going to sit him down and let him think about it a little bit. Bolsey is back into the game. He has four fouls. When they get into the Big East schedule, that won't worry them so much because they'll have six. But tonight, he's only got one more to give. <laughs> I think that's going to help a lot of teams in that conference. A team like Seton Hall, certainly a team like Georgetown, Syracuse, with the big bodies that play physically. That extra foul could be a bonus. No question. The SEC as well will play with six fouls this year. Perry doing a good job on Dickinson. The hair bails him up. This is good execution. They really want to milk a little bit of the clock here. Oh, nice little crossover for us. Hot clock down to six before Volsey takes a shot, but he also takes steps. And you can't shoot it to yourself. He lost control on his initial shot attempt and came down with the ball. Nobody touched it. Jim Dickinson, identical numbers to what he had at Wake Forest. 15 minutes. He'll get more than 15 minutes tonight by the time it's all over, but still... A role player as a freshman is doing a tremendous job. Duckett is open along the baseline, but his shot is no good. And Cooper, who seems to be everywhere tonight, has the rebound. Going at all, and he's not had a break other than the halftime and the timeout. Bolsey is alone. He gets a little shove in the back. Perry is whistled, I believe. Seton Hall does a nice job of looking over the top. Whenever a big guy down low has an opportunity to post up. And Rutgers is, has been fronting completely, looking for weak side help, and they haven't gotten it consistently, and the Hall's done a nice job of throwing it down inside with the lob. Wolsey with his 11th point of the night to go with seven rebounds. He was on the bench for six minutes with that fourth foul. Seton Hall managed to hang on to the lead, and here's a chance to push it back up to eight. Attica from way outside, and that's short. Ball is off Rutgers, and Seton Hall will have another chance. I know the Scarlet Knights are a pretty good three-point shooting team, but there comes a time when you have to be very selective in when you're going to shoot the three-pointer, and I think they've just settled for that three-pointer maybe a bit too much as opposed to exploring and probing, trying to get maybe a higher percentage shot. Volsey with a nice cut, but the shot won't go. It might be also a little bit early to go to that three-pointer. There's still over five minutes left, and there they are, bombs away. Savage that time. I mean, Rutgers, as Duncan takes the three-point shot, they're operating as if there's a minute and a half left in the game. Clearly, they're looking for the three-pointer too much. Again, after the ball's been moved, and you've got a good spot up on taking, but they're not even looking to probe inside for anything else. They're just casting away the three. Rutgers has missed seven consecutive shots. It's been about four minutes since they scored. Dickinson oh. along the baseline. Perry thought he had position. I think he reached in. He did have good position with his feet, but he reached in. We're going to take a look. How about the big guy laying it on the floor? Now watch the reach. There it is right there. When you come over the top like that, you're always, almost always going to be called for the foul. That's the third on Perry and number six on Rutgers, so the next one will send Seton Hall into the bonus. Well, Chris and Terry DeHair. DeHair is also a great ball handler. Played with Bobby Hurley, of course, at Jersey City, and Bobby Hurley Sr. And they were both great ball handlers. Hurley was really the point guard and the hair of the shooting, but both of them could handle the ball very well. Makes your backcourt that much tougher when you can interchange roles back there. Oh. 
the hair weaving his way in. Doesn't get the shot off as Keith Hughes is there and knock it back into his face. Would help that time by the Scarlet Knights. Let's see if they try to get something other than the tray. Nope. Duncan's three-pointer is off the mark. That's eight shots in a row missed by Rutgers. The hair with a little stutter step kisses it off the glass, and it's good. Good no call that time. Excellent no call. Carter tried to get there for the foul. A little too close to the hoop, and the officials just let him play. Terry DeHair with 16 points. Bob Wendell wants a timeout. His team is down by nine, 67 to 58. 342 left in the game. Is this a freshman? <laughs> he doesn't play like one. Here, excellent no call. Carter tries to take the charge, and DeHair kissed it nicely off the window. Rutgers has been bombing away from the three-point range. They've shot 20 in the game, made six. And two of 12 in the second half. They have not scored in the last 5-16, and I think they've been taking nothing but three-pointers in that time. They really have just settled too quickly for the three-pointer. And again, I mentioned it earlier, they're certainly a pretty good three-point shooting team, but they've struggled from there, and they've settled for it too quickly. They have they don't have a dominant post up player, but certainly Hughes and Duckett, and even Duncan can get inside and make it happen, but they've just really settled for the outside jump shot far too much. Seton Hall zone has taken it away, son. Sure, again, the shots have been available in the zone, but when you're trying to make a run, one of the ways you do it, if you're not hitting outside, is to get it inside and try to draw some fouls. Carter has to dish it off. Savage again bombs away and again comes up empty. Foul is called on Chris, his second of the night. Anthony Avent still on the Seton bench Hall. for Seton Hall with four fouls. Wolsey is in the game with four fouls, but here comes. <laughs> they must have PJ heard, heard me. He heard you from down from up here. <laughs> Avent comes in. Dickinson goes down, and what a job. You can't say enough about the job that the seven-foot freshman did. They've been working him in the weight room and want him to tighten up his body a little bit, but I tell you, they've been pleased with his effort. And his, his work ethic. So Carter converts. There's a chance to get Rutgers to the 60 point mark and get the lead back down to seven with 3.18 left. He knocks down this one. They'll probably go to the full court pressure. Maybe look to kick it away, get it, get it back. They're going to deny the inbounds pass. The hair turns and comes back. Pressure really hasn't been a problem for the Hall. Neither has this crowd. They've withstood every rally by the Scarlet Knights. Seton Hall will work the clock likely with every possession now. They've really gotten some good shot opportunities out of this set where they have four guys up high, one ball handle. The hair plays his way, but Keith Hughes blocked that with his elbow. <laughs> Great help that time by Hughes. The only thing he didn't do was keep it in bounds, but that's not always possible. Here's the drive by DeHair. Good defense by Duncan. There's Hughes clearly over the top with a clean block. A little Syracuse connection there. Duncan led DeHair right to Hughes, and Hughes took care of him. Fanned him into the lane. I really think Rutgers has to try to put a little more pressure on the ball here. We're winding down the clock becoming their adversary. Off in the five second count is called off. Again, Seton Hall works the clock. Ten on the shot clock. Foul on Duncan as he's reaching in after the loose ball. Avent would go to the line. <laughs> PJ getting his money's worth and getting his full 40 minutes plus. Coaching in. You know, just in talking to him, you can tell he really feels good about his club. Like the way they play, they play together, they work hard defensively and on the board. And when you're doing those two things, if you're rebounding well and playing pretty good defense, you're going to be in most games. 
Avent with his 11 point. I saw a quote somewhere where PG said, oh, we, could, we could lose 28 games. <laughs> Have you ever met a coach yet who thinks he has any kind of a team? Yeah, it doesn't make any difference whether it's football or basketball. Lou Holtz has gotten the reputation of poor mouth in his squad before games. And I think it's just part of being a coach. It's a nine-point Seton Hall lead. Rutgers has been just bombing away from three-point range here in the second half, but no success. Hughes finally ends the drought with a good three-pointer to get the lead just back to six. Well, again, against the zone, that's available, and Hughes came out of the locker room at halftime and got nine quick points, and since then, he's kind of been involved in that drought that his teammates suffered through. He has 18 points on the night, but you're right. He came out really quickly. Volsey and Avent, four fouls apiece. Cooper with 17 points. He had 14 at halftime. Rutgers was held close for five minutes, 40 seconds. You see, they're not shooting well as they haven't been this year. You have to be impressed with the poise of this freshman of Seton Hall. Perry DeHair, he's their leading scorer. Dickinson doing a tremendous job off the bench. And Chris comes up calmly, hits the first one, doesn't get the second one, but still doing a great job. Oh, great hustle to dig it out of there. And Dadica commits the foul. Well, was that Chris that went down and got that ball out of the scramble? Yes, he was. Seton Hall last year surprised a lot of people, played with so much poise, and did such a great job in getting to the final game. You know, that can carry over. That mentality and that type of toughness. The players may change, but that type of, of attitude can be instilled in every kid that comes into the program and clearly displaying itself tonight. Carter swings it to Hughes, who lets a three-pointer go that will fall. Savage is over top of the back of Cooper. And that's his third. He fell on, on seven, his third. One minute, 30 seconds left in the game. A seven point lead, Bob Wenzel possibly seeing this one slip away from him. Still a lot of time in college basketball, as you know. Seton Hall has answered every challenge thus far. You know, when you've got good three-point shooters, speaking of Rutgers, as a coach, you really don't want to keep them from looking for that shot because they're pretty good at it. But at the same time, the players have to be able to make good enough judgments to know when they need to look for something else. A long home by Craig Carter drops in. And finally, the three-pointers are starting to go. You shoot enough of them, they're bound to. <laughs> That's right. Dadica reaches around and slaps the wrist of Anthony Avent to stop the clock again. That's his fourth. And right here we get down to what supposedly was going to be a point, a point of the rules people and the <laughs> officials to look at and start calling those intentional fouls. Point of emphasis, they call it. And my man Dick Vitale last night was really screaming about it. But, hey, Dick screams about everything. <laughs> no question. But he's got a valid point. Rutgers down by six. Two possessions can tie the game. See, a quick two here is as good as a three, in my opinion. But now you almost, because you haven't gotten a quick two. Oh, oh, oh yes, you have. <laughs> he Hughes finds the opening and jams it down. Oh, my. Who they, oh, they missed the foul on Hughes, who just actually tried to grab. I don't know who it was. Was it the hair? for the foul and DeHair will go to the line on the one and one. Four point game as Keith Hughes just bang to the line. Harry DeHair, the freshman, with 16 points. Ball is into the line once and missed. Oh, look at this madhouse. <laughs> the young fella. Quiet from 
moment there. With a snowstorm of red and white going behind him. Harry the hair can see only one thing, and that's the rim. Back up to six points. Under a minute left in the game now. Hughes for three, and it goes in. And a timeout for Rutgers as they cut it down to 74-71. Bob Wendell and his crew are not dead yet. The Battle of New Jersey is going down to the wire. We'll be back. It is from Kodak. It is for the advanced photographer. It delivers the highest resolution. Microfine grain. Superior image structure. It is called Ektar. Sounds like the most impressive color print film ever made. It is. New Ektar film by Kodak. The genius is in the details. Lately, Showtime's made some overinflated claims. They say they have big movies, but it's really HBO that has eight out of ten of the year's top films. It's like Rain Man, Coming to America, The Naked Gun. Movies you just won't see on Showtime. And you won't see Mike Tyson on Showtime either, because HBO's got in, along with nearly twice as many original programs. So considering all the facts, nobody brings it home like HBO. You don't think... These crazies count for some points out there. And I use the phrase crazies lovingly, of course. They definitely rival the folks down at Cameron Indoor on the campus of Duke. And they bring Rutgers all the way back. So down by three, 46 seconds left. Hall would have to shoot the ball. The clock is on, but Duckett commits the foul to send Volsey to the line. Well, you talked about it during the break, John, the fact that <laughs> Rutger living and dying by the three-pointer. About four minutes ago, I thought they had killed themselves with the three-pointer, but the last couple of possessions, they got him down. He makes it a two-possession proposition once again for Rutgers. Forty seconds left. Carter with a three-pointer, and suddenly Rutgers is as hot as you want to get from three-point range. Foul is called on Keith Hughes, and he'll send Terry DeHair to the line. Oh, now these free throws are huge. A one and one, only a two-point cushion. DeHair, who knocked down two just a moment ago. The way Rutgers is knocking down the three-pointer. And really, I think Steve Hall has to try to force him into something else.
Duncan reaching around and did get a piece of the ball, but got more of Avent. Stops the clock. A four-point game. Seton Hall can pretty much win it at the line. Avent only a 55% free throw shooter, although he shot better than that so far tonight. It's 4-4 four four in the first half. Six of seven on the night. for three. It's long. Cooper hauls down the rebound and Dadica has to commit the foul. Dadica has fouled out of the game with seven seconds left. There you saw his graphic, just three points for Dadica. Really didn't look to shoot the basketball tonight. And they need some offensive production from him. You wonder about the adjustment for Rick Datica from the point guard to the two guard. Well, again, it's still early in the season. You've got two new bodies in Duncan and Hughes that are playing significant minutes. That forces Datica to make an adjustment. That forced Craig Carter to make an adjustment. And, and clearly, as the season progresses, by the time the conference schedule starts, the kinks will be ironed out. This Rutgers team should be a team to reckon with in the A-10. Seton Hall trying to make it four straight wins over Rutgers. Cooper pushes the lead to five. P.J. Carlissimo wants a timeout to talk about the strategy after the next free throw. You have to be impressed, though, by Seton Hall. I mean, we've seen them talk about losing 82% of their offense, 70% of their rebounders. They puts on the floor is schooled so well. They play tremendous defense. They just don't give you any second chance. And they rarely beat themselves. They stay within what they're trying to do. When you've got big physical bodies, and again, the foul situation didn't become an issue until midway through, well, actually early in the second half. And then they got production from Jim Dickinson. And then just had a tremendous game from Michael Cooper. We want to take a moment here to send our condolences to Rutgers University. Dr. Edward J. Blaustein, Rutgers 17th president, died of a heart attack last weekend at the age of 64. He has served as president of New Jersey State University since 1971, a big part of moving Rutgers into the arena of big-time athletics, and he was one of the founding fathers of this building here. ESPN's condolences to Rutgers and to Dr. Blaustein's family. misses the second it'll still take two possessions for Rutgers and with only three seconds left as the shot is off and time will run out runs out on the Scarlet Knights and Seton Hall has won it 79 to 74 their fourth straight win over Rutgers and their first ever here at the Athletic Center right now let's go to Chris Fowler Okay, thank you, John and Clark. So P.J. Carlissimo now 112 and 112 in his career. It's been a long climb back to 500 after a rough start. December 23rd, uh, uh, Seton Hall will take on Michigan rematch of last year's championship game. One final, Georgetown hammering St. Leo 92-51. Dikembe Mutombo 15 points, 17 rebounds, and 